Hello everyone, today is going to be my last day in Fukuoka. This afternoon, I'll be checking out a traditional tea shop that specializes in Fukuoka Yame tea and they've been in the area for over 300 years. As far as the rest of the day goes, I don't really have anything planned, so it should just be a pretty chill day in Fukuoka. Without further ado, let's embark on our adventure today. I just finished up shopping here at Uniqlo, and now I'm going to be heading to lunch at Tatsumi Sushi, which is just inside of the Iwataya department store that I was at yesterday, and it's a super popular sushi chain, so I think it's going to be pretty great. I decided to order their lunch course at Tatsumi Sushi, and it comes with chawamushi, which is a warm egg custard, and then it also comes with salad and nine pieces of nigiri sushi. Let's start off the meal with our salad, and it's topped off with a sesame dressing. Mm. The salad is so light and refreshing, and I love the top because it's covered in dark roasted sesame seeds, which really bring that extra savory flavor. Now let's go for a taste of our chawamushi. Oh, that's so light and airy. It just glides down your throat as you swallow it. I really love the flavor because it's so lightly flavored. It's just like a little bit of steamed eggs. And again, they are using high quality Japanese eggs. So you really taste all that delicious egg yolk flavor. Right before they pass out the sushi, they give you this little glass filled with rice and topped off with salmon roe, as well as uni and a tiny bit of wasabi on top. And if you know me, I have mixed feelings about uni, but I think in this way, it's gonna be quite tasty. That's actually quite tasty. I really love that they don't give you too much uni since it's a very dominating flavor. It has a bit of a savory, briny, irony flavor, but then that's really mellowed out by the vinegared rice. And then you have the little burst of the salmon roe as well. And to round it off, you just have some of the wasabi flavor, which cuts a little bit of the strength of the uni. We also have this clear soup broth. That's delicious. It's just a clear dashi broth and it's warm and comforting. But now we gotta get on to the main part of the show, the, all of the sushi. Without even trying the sushi, I can already tell that it's high class sushi since it's already seasoned both with sauce and with wasabi. Let's start off with the squid. Mm. Well, that's gonna be some of the most flavorful squid sushi I've ever had. They give you a thick layer of squid on top, which is perfectly chewy and tender all at the same time. Not slimy at all. And then on top, you have a really sweet and sort of tangy miso sauce. And then beneath that, you have a decent amount of wasabi. So it definitely brings your a tear to your eye, but in a good way. We also have another sushi right here. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like it's topped off with sea grapes. I'm not sure what cut this is, it's just a beautifully tender and buttery white fish and then it's topped off with a little bit of grated daikon radish which really adds a nice juiciness and moistens up the sushi even more. Now we have another sushi, this one looks quite interesting, the skin looks a little green on top but it's very large so I'm going to have to do this one in two bites. Ooh, that's quite nice as well. I believe that's a mackerel, so it definitely tastes like a thinner cut of fish, and it's a bit more oily and slightly fishy. However, that fishy flavor is definitely cut down by all the condiments they add, since there's some fresh raw green onions in there, which had a nice crunch, and then a sweet soy glaze. Now I want to go for this one. I feel like it's just calling out to me because it's topped off with little slices of hot peppers, so I know this is going to be one flavorful, zesty, and spicy bite. The fish just has a slight chew to it and it's blanketed in that same sweet soy sauce I had earlier and at the very end you just get a little bit of heat from the chilies on top. I like how they don't overwhelm the flavor of the gentle sushi. Now we have another cut of fish. This just has a light pink color and it looks like it's topped off with daikon similar to one of the ones I had earlier. 
That is very similar to the one I had earlier. It has grated daikon on top, which I love on sushi. I've discovered, and I really am happy about that. And there's also a little bit of sesame oil flavor. And then the fish has an interesting texture. It's very soft and delicate at the beginning, and then you just get a little bit of chew at the end. We also have a nari sushi, which is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, that is one juicy and succulent bite. On the outside, you have the tofu skin, which is just like drenched in a sweet soy. So as you bite into it, it just releases all of the flavor and all of the juices. And then as you chew it more, you get a little bit of crunch on the inside. I believe there's some sort of Japanese radish in there. And then the rice itself is really tasty because it's just incorporated with a healthy amount of sesame seeds. Finally, I have to end with one of my all-time favorite types of sushi, tuna. That is just melt in your mouth tuna, which is really impressive considering it's just a lightly fatty cut. So it's a really nice balance. You get some flavor from the tuna itself, and you just get a rich, heavy flavor from the fat without it weighing you down too much. So it's almost just like the perfect balance. I almost forgot that our course also comes with dessert, and it looks like they gave me some sort of tea jelly. This just tastes like a coffee jelly. It has a really nice bouncy texture. The flavor is slightly sweet and also slightly bitter from the coffee. And I think overall it's a well-balanced dessert. And I also like how it comes with a little bit of whipped cream. That was such a nice and refreshing lunch. It was quite different than the lunch I had yesterday. And now I'm gonna be heading to 308-year-old tea shop. just ordered their tea set which comes with matcha tea using their high quality yame green tea leaves. You also have two choices of tea cakes to go along with your tea so I decided to get their candied sweet potatoes as well as their matcha financer. The tea set just came out and I want to start off with this yame matcha. It looks incredible. It looks so bright and green and it seems lusciously thick. That is the perfectly made cup of matcha tea. It's the perfect warmness. It's not too hot where you're gonna burn yourself, but it's warm enough where you can really taste the tea at its maximum flavor. They've made this matcha expertly because it's really light and foamy on top and you don't have any graininess at all. It's just really smooth and again the texture. There's just so much matcha powder in this water that's been mixed together. So it just has a rich and thick, almost syrupy texture. I would say that I'm a tea connoisseur because I really enjoy a high quality cup of tea and this is perfectly done. Definitely a must try for some really high quality matcha tea, but I also have some tea cakes to try out as well. This is their candied sweet potato. Oh, that is delicious to go with the tea. It really cuts the bitterness of the matcha tea. And then outside you have a real nice sugar crust and the sweet potato itself, because it's been dried, it just takes on this really unique, chewy, and almost doughy texture. And it's so pleasing just to take a bite of that and then a sip of the tea. Finally, I'll be getting a taste of the Siyame Matcha Financer. has such a nice texture. It's really dense while being fluffy at the same time. And the flavor of it, you definitely taste the matcha in there as well. It also has a perfect sort of butteriness that is really pleasing. If you're looking for a traditional tea experience at Fukuoka, definitely head here. I just picked up a whole bunch of different teas here because I enjoyed my tea experience so much and now I'm going to be trying even more when I get home from my trip. They also gave me a sheet on how to brew this super high quality tea so that I can enjoy it at its peak. I know what you're thinking, yes I came back to Oishikoria today because I enjoyed the kakagori I had yesterday so much. I ordered their milk kakagori flavor which is made with milk from also in Kumamoto Prefecture. Let's give this a taste, it looks like it's topped off with a milk syrup. Whoa, 
That is so sweet. It just tastes like it's covered in rich, thick, condensed milk. It is so milky and it's just an intense sweetness. It's definitely a lot sweeter than the strawberry one I had yesterday. I think the best part about it is the ice tastes like it's made out of shaved milk. So it's not just regular shaved ice, but it's made out of milk, which gives it an extra dairy flavor. And in a way, it's almost like a light and airy ice cream. If you enjoy condensed milk flavored desserts, I think you'll probably love this one. But in my opinion, I think the strawberry shave ice is even better here. Today is also Monday. So when I came here around 3.40 p.m., there was no wait. So definitely make sure to come here on a weekday instead of a weekend. That way you don't have to wait in line. Now I'm going to be heading off to my final dinner in Fukuoka. I'm going to be trying out a popular yakitori restaurant since yakitori is one of the last famous foods I've wanted to try in Fukuoka. So let's go. I arrived here at Tori Budo and I placed my order. The hotel concierge recommended that I try out this place since it's known for being a higher end yakitori restaurant. Yakitori is grilled chicken skewers, so I got a whole bunch of different types, ranging from chicken tail to chicken heart. First, I'm gonna start off with the dish that they use to cover the table charge. This is the chawamushi or egg custard. This is definitely a bit on the thinner side. It's almost like a liquid, but it tastes like this chawamushi has been made with a chicken stock. So it has a little bit of a lighter egg flavor, but just a really deep and rich chicken flavor. The first skewer I'm gonna start off with is their boneless salt chicken wings. Wow. First of all, you gotta be really careful. The second I bit through the crispy skin, a whole bunch of steam just shot out of there and it's piping hot. The chicken is ultra juicy and I think the skin on the outside is the best part since this is covered in a layer of salt. So it's really savory and the chicken almost has a buttery flavor to it because it's so rich. Now for their garlic sprouts. It looks like it's covered in some sort of seasoning. Oh, the garlic sprouts are great. They have a juicy, sweet, gentle flavor, and it's not over garlicky either. And then on the outside, you have a thin, crispy layer of bacon, and that's definitely common with Japanese vegetable skewers. They're almost always covered in bacon. Now for their beef skewer, and this is just covered in green onions. To be honest, the beef skewer is just all right. It's really juicy and has great flavor at the beginning, but as you chew it, it just gets really tough and gristly. So I think it's probably better to use with the chicken dishes on the menu. I also had to get their chicken tail, which is one of my favorite yakitori skewers. Oh, this is so indulgent and rich. The outside has just been crispified by all the grilling. Plenty of salt on here as well. This is my favorite seasoning to go with chicken tail but the chicken its tail itself is so rich and fatty. I mean, I would say it's like 10% meat and 90% fat. So it's almost just like biting into a cube of chicken fat. So you definitely have ones on a bit richer side here. So I would just stick with maybe one or two of these. Now for the chicken heart. Mm. If you've never had chicken heart before, definitely give it a try when you're in Japan. It's so juicy, has a rich, irony flavor without tasting bloody. And to me, it just tastes like a tender, juicy cut of beef. I also got chicken gizzard, which was probably my favorite cut of chicken that I had on my last trip. Oh, the gizzard's great as well. It's just got a really unique, crunchy, and meaty texture that you don't get from any other cut of chicken. And then the flavor is also nice, a rich chicken flavor. And this one definitely doesn't taste quite as irony or rich as the chicken heart, but it's so much better than the chicken gizzard you get back in the US, because that stuff is usually like a tire and just has no flavor. This is awesome. I also got chicken and green onion, which is negitoro. That is one of the juiciest and tenderest cuts of chicken I've had so far. It's just covered in a sweet sauce, and I feel like that really absorbs all the flavor from the grill, all that smoky goodness. And then to go with that, you have the green onions, which are cut per cooked perfectly, because they're so juicy, and they really add to the dish. I also got one final mysterious dish, which is called the chicken lantern. I'm 
I'm still not particularly sure what it is. It just tastes like a chicken intestine to me, I'm guessing. And it tastes like a little bit of chicken meat wrapped around a chewy intestine, and that's actually quite tasty. I made it back to the hotel after dinner, and once again, I am stuffed since I got totally carried away and I ordered way too many yakitori skewers. Without a doubt, this was a totally successful last day in Fukuoka. Anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure if you did, give it a like, and also make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video when we go to Kagoshima.